Hello, everyone, and welcome to this session in which we'll keep working with the statement of cash flows. Specifically, we're down to the financing section. We're done with investing. We're done with operating. Now financing. Financing deals with how a company finance itself. And how do we finance the company? Through debt and equity, long-term debt, long-term equity. This is the financing section. We could also have here dividend, not interest. Remember interest, we talked about interest. It's in the operating section. It's a little bit unusual, but you have to know this. So here, buying back your own debt, issuing new long-term debt, issuing stocks, buying back your own stock, paying dividend. This is how a company uh, finance itself. You need to be familiar with the equity section. You need to be familiar with long-term debt. That's all. And you should be fine. We'll go through it. And once we are done with this section, we'll reconcile this, the whole statement of cash flows. We're going to be working the same example. So this way you can see the big picture from A, B to C, operating, investing, financing, that it all makes sense once all said and done. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. So let's go ahead and wrap up this example. The financing section is the third section. Operating was the first section, investing second, and financing third. What is financing? How does the company finance itself? Well, they can finance, the company can finance itself by issuing stocks, its own stock, by issuing its own bonds, simply put, form of borrowing. So this is the positive cash flows. The opposite of this is when you pay, when you buy back your own stock, stock acquisition, which is treasury stock, it's a negative cash outflow. If you issue stocks, you might have to pay dividend or you might decide to pay dividend. That's an outflow of cash. And after you issue bonds and borrow money, sometime you pay it off. Remember interest, on this loan is part of the operating activities. Again, we're gonna be using a three-step process in the financing section. Identify the changes in, in any financing related accounts, such as common stock, dividend, notes payable, bonds payable, form of borrowing. Explain the changes using a T account, and maybe you have to look at the entries, and report the effect of their cash flow on the statement of cash flows. Again, we're working with the same example, the triple K example. This is their income statement and this is their balance sheet. We're already done with the current assets under the operating activities. In the prior session, we looked at the investing activities. We looked at this section as well. What's left is long-term debt, which is financing and current liabilities are gone and the equity section, which is common stock, and we will reconcile retained earnings. So the investing activities is uh, property, plant, and equipment, and investment. When it comes to financing, it's debt and equity. The company's its own debt and the company's own equity. Again, we are giving additional information. Remember, item one was operating activities, which we are done with this. Item two and item three were investing activities. Those are investing activities. Item four, five, and six we will be using in this in this session. Those are financing related additional information, which we will be using as we're analyzing the financial statements. Starting with the long-term debt, which is notes payable. We notice that long-term debt went from 4,557,400 to 4,556,000, it went down by $1,000. Now we are told in the additional notes that we did borrow money. Notice in the additional notes, it says, Triple K purchased 110,000 in plant asset by issuing a note. So somehow, if, the, if this was the only thing that happened, there is a mistake, but there is no mistake. It must 
something else might have happened beside beside this transaction and we are giving item 3 explaining that our note went up which is fine but we are also told that triple K also retired a note they paid off a note that note had a book value of 110,000 so let's first kind of take a look at the notes the net decrease of a thousand dollar is not really we paid off the note of a thousand let's take a look at what happened first retiring the note when we retired the note we paid 81,000 we credit cash 81,000 the note had a book value of 111 so we debited the note to remove the note because we retired the note we paid 81,000 that's good we had a loan for 111 we were able to settle the loan for 81 as a result we have a gain of 30,000 remember this gain went on the income statement and we adjusted this gain in the operating section therefore we took care of the gain the notes payable is 111,000 what we care about is the cash therefore we have a negative cash outflow negative of 81,000 because we had to pay off the note now we also need to re re reconstruct the entry for the issuance of the note in item 2 we purchase a plant asset for 110,000 debit plant asset 110,000 credit notes payable 110,000 so notes payable notice went up 110 went down 111 what's the net difference the net difference is 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 a thousand and indeed if we look at the at the balance sheet there was a decrease of a thousand but was this the cash outflow or the cash inflow no if we look at all these transactions the only cash is what let me highlight the cash in yellow the only cash activity was 81,000 therefore as far as we are concerned we paid $81,000 in cash. That's why you have to look at this additional information. Without the additional information, without the additional information, we would have, have thought that they paid off $1,000 of their balance because the notes payable went down by $1,000. But that's not really the case. What they did is they paid actually $81,000. The additional notes that they took over, they did not borrow it with cash. They did not receive cash. They brought, they purchased in a plant asset therefore the cash is a negative 81,000 a payment of 81,000 and let's reconstruct the T account we started with 4,557,400 we end up with 4,556,400 this was from the balance sheet we retired the note we debited notes payable 111 we credited notes payable for the purchase of the plant asset but all in all in all of this what we did is we we paid off this loan for $81,000 cash and that's the only cash amount therefore cash flow from financing activities starting with the retiring of retirement of the note is 81,000 what do we need to do with the 110,000 remember we talked about this in the prior session when we look at the investing this is a non-cash investing and financing activity and what do we do with this transaction we disclose it so basically we are done with notes payable so this was a non cash and this was this was an outflow of cash this 111 for how much for 81000 so that's that now we need to analyze common stock well let's take a look at the balance sheet first at the balance sheet we see that common stock overall went up by 75000 now why, why would common stock goes up because the company issues common stock when they issue common stock common stock balance should go up let's see if we are giving any information yes we are told that triple K received 75,000 in cash by issuing 5,000 shares of common stock pretty straightforward well what does that mean it means we received cash of 75,000 from common stock and we can go go ahead and look at the T account we started common stock 420 we end up for 495 even if the, if we were not told anything we would assume that it went up by 75 but we are told specifically that cash received from the issuings of stock of 75,000 so notice we paid off the debt negative 81 under financing we we uh, issued stock plus 75,000 so those are the two items so that's that's easy we even without 
being told this information we is, we assume we issue stocks for cash if we're not told otherwise what's left the only thing that's left is we paid dividend of 522,600 and we are told so how do we know we are told so well get, take a look we are told clearly in the additional information and this is where the additional information becomes extremely important of 522,600 now if you were not given this information you might have to figure out how much dividend was paid what do you do under those circumstances under those circumstances what you will do is you re, re restructure your retained earnings you would say my beginning retained earnings was 368600 my ending retained earnings was 341600 this is giving from the balance sheet from the income statement i know my my income was 495600 which should increase my net income so 368600 plus 495600 minus something equal to 341,600, that minus something is 522,600, but you are giving this information. That's the good news. You are giving the dividend, but this information may not be given. But simply put, you need to know the formula for what? The formula for, the formula for retained earnings, which is beginning retained earnings, beginning retained earnings plus net income minus dividend equal to ending retained earnings you were giving everything but if dividend was not giving you, you can you can you can figure out this number if you are giving dividend and net income is not giving you will figure out net income so you need to you need you need to have the beginning ending and either net income or dividend information in order to figure out the remaining section now here what you do is you debit retained earnings to reduce retained earnings and you credit your own credit notes payable you credit dividend payable it's a mistake here dividend payable you you will debit you will credit a liability then you debit the li you debit the dividend payable and you credit cash eventually when you pay it off or if you paid immediately you debit retained earnings credit cash but that's not how you do it first you declare it and it what it becomes debit retained earnings credit dividend payable then when you pay it you debit dividend payable and you credit cash now we are uh, we are done with this statement of cash flow we prepare the operating section we prepare the investing section and now we prepare the financing section we paid off notes of 81,000 we issued stocks of 75 and we paid dividend now we net the investing section and under the investing section it's a net cash used it means consumed negative of 528,600. Now what you do is you net them out. From operating, I brought 554,600. From the investing, I brought 18,000. From the financing, I used 528,000. If I net those out, they will net out to 44,000. And this is the change in the cash position. So remember when I started this series of recording, I told you, I need to figure out how how did we come up with this forty four thousand. Let me go back and show you what I mean by the fifty four by the forty four thousand. When we looked at the balance sheet initially, I told you the whole purpose of the statement of cash flows is to explain the difference in the cash account from from year four to year five, which was an increase of forty four. Now, why was an increase of forty four thousand? Now we can see why, and let's analyze why, so you have an idea of what's happening here. The company from operating, they generated $554,600. They sold some plant asset of 18. Then what they did is they mostly paid, they made a payment of dividend. The, the investing, the largest one is dividend because the stock and the bond, the stock and the uh, those two basically cancel each other. What's left is the big dividend. So this is what happened. The company made a profit from operating the business. They sold a little bit of asset. Uh, they sold a little bit of asset and received cash. Basically, they took the money that they generated from operating and they paid it to the investors. And I'm sure the investors loved it. Now this this is the change. You will take the change and you add the change to the beginning to come up with the ending of 180,000 and this was the ending cash flow. So notice what we did the whole purpose of the statement of cash flow is to kind of can we reconcile this 44,000 figure out where it came from. Now from a business perspective this is a pretty healthy company. They made a lot of money 
from operating the business 554,600 uh, well this is investing is really minor they sold some sort of an investment plant asset and they received 18 and what they did with the money they paid it to the shareholders in form of dividend and this shows when the company makes a profit and paid it out in dividend this shows confidence in the company it means management is okay they're comfortable paying off not paying off they're comfortable distributing the profit to the shareholders this means they can make more profit down the road which is good so this is the statement of cash flows the three section extremely important financial statement statement of cash flows you need to know this inside out because what you did is you took the income statement and you convert the income statement into a cash net income you figure out how much they spend on plant asset which is investing activities and you figure out whether they are consuming or they are bringing cash from financing activities what should you do now you want to go to Farhat lectures look at mcqs look at uh, additional resources lectures exercises that's going to help you whether you are an accounting student a cpa candidate cma candidate or just taking this for professional development invest in yourself good luck Farhat Lectures is always here to help and stay safe.